this morning. Many people from eastern Kentucky are still without water as the situation continues to linger. And a new bill introduced last week wants to help remedy the school transportation dilemma many Commonwealth parents are facing. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 531 on Tuesday, January 30th. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. A lot of clouds across the region. Some of us, though, have some breaks in the clouds. We're at 32 right outside our studios here at WYMT. Well, some of us that do have the breaks in the clouds have gotten colder 20s this morning. So needless to say, there could be some issues regarding some black ice, the parking lots, the driveways and the sidewalks. Keep that in mind. Bursts of some shower little light rain as we head through this afternoon into this evening. That continues overnight into Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be a little bit cool with the unsettled theme. But once we get past tomorrow, it is a nice stretch. Thursday, Friday, and yes, into the first half of this coming weekend. Temps again, mainly in the 30s. We do have the breaks we have dropped into the 20s. The pinpoint Doppler radar not active right now. It will be this afternoon. And close-up inspection of the satellite radar composite shows those breaks in the clouds this morning. We look to the north and west. This break right through here may lend itself to some sunshine today. There is the shower action for later today. Here's your 12-hour planner. Breaks of sunshine, showers, a burst of light rain as we head through or at least arriving this afternoon into this evening with a high up close to 49 in hazard. More about the first alert 70 forecast in a few moments. Olivia. All right, Tim, thank you. Yesterday, a hearing was held for Erica Lawson, the mother accused of killing 17 month old Elena Hembry, who died in July. Lawson's attorney filed a motion to dismiss, dismiss the death penalty as a possible sentence. The motion was originally made on Thursday. Bell County Commonwealth's attorney Lisa Fugit says her office did not receive the motion until Friday, not giving her enough time to respond. That motion is quite lengthy uh, with many things, many things that need clarified, many things are, that are very misleading and, and just not true. Uh, so the Commonwealth wants time to file a response to that. Uh, that way it's filed in the record and the public as well as the court is aware of, of the things and the inaccuracies in that motion. Along with the motion to dismiss the death penalty as a sentencing option, the defense filed a motion for an independent review of the evidence in the case. The judge ruled while they can do that, the holder of the evidence will be present. Authorities in western Kentucky took a man into custody for allegedly killing the mother of his child. 42-year-old Byron Black was arrested Monday afternoon. Kentucky State Police had a warrant for Black in connection to the murder of Kelly Black. That's when he and his 5-year-old daughter Layla disappeared. Kelly Black's body was found Sunday. An Amber Alert was issued for Layla, who police believed was with her father when they vanished. When officers caught up to the pair, the child was located safely and the Amber Alert was canceled. With water issues across the region, officials are looking for ways to resolve the problem. Some Harlan Countyans have been without water for more than a week now. WYMT's RJ Johnson tells us what the judge executive is doing to try to resectify the issue. Ongoing water outages in Harlan County are continuing to be a burden on people, especially those using the city of Everts's water system. And when I say suffered, I mean suffered. They have dealt without. I've talked to people who not only are elderly, people who are sick. It is heartbreaking and it has agonized me for what you are going through. Harlan County Judge Executive Dan Mosley says they are looking at several ways to help this situation. He says they have requested an osmosis purification system that is operated by the Kentucky National Guard. That has not been approved at this point at the state level. However, we feel like that if we can implement 
this osmosis purification system, perhaps at the High Splint Lake, that it will provide the ability to inject water back into the, the lines. Connecting water to those living up the river. He says they have also requested a shower trailer to be put in place at the Clover Fork Fire Department. The issue that obviously you have with a shower trailer is trying to figure out how to keep the temporary water supply on to, to, to work the showers. So where there is no water within about 10 miles of, of the fire department right now to be able to tap into, we're, we're having to navigate through what that looks like. Saying they are committed to help resolve this issue. We are committed to helping them get through this. We've been there over the last 15 months in the way of distributing water every time there was an outage for more than 24 hours. That will continue. In Harlan County, R.J. Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Mosley says nearby fire departments are also giving away water to families. He says they changed the cap from three gallons each day to three gallons for each person in the household. If you were not sure where to go, Mosley says to call his office or the Harlan County Emergency Management Office. And many people in the Buckhorn and Leatherwood areas of Perry County are still without water. While organizations are stepping up to help, many are frustrated that infrastructure improvements that could reduce some of the shortage situations are so slow in coming. WYMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to people about what is slowing down the path to progress. There are large ceremonial blue checks in the Perry County Fiscal Courtroom. We still got citizens who don't have access to clean water. Nearly $9 million alone will build a new plant in Buckhorn, which was devastated by flooding in 2022 and has been without good service for more than a week. And so we're going to be one of the few communities that will actually have two water plants pulling from two different reservoirs uh, to provide our citizens water. The money is there, but it can't be spent yet. You know, when the governor comes to town, you know, and, and they present that big check, that's just the beginning of the paperwork to, to get that funding agency in line. Senator Brandon Smith says money is available. There is plenty of that to get these projects done. These projects are being tied up, though, for the number of studies that have to be done, including environmental studies, to get that money in the bank for it to be spent and for construction to begin. And it usually takes sometimes up to two years to, to get through all of that paperwork process. The new plant in Buckhorn will allow for the treatment of millions of gallons of water while taking the strain off the current plant in Hazard. You know, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but until those customers, you know, get to go a winter without running out of water, you know, it's, it's hard on them and it's hard for them to see. And current problems also stem from water having to be pumped 38 miles in one direction and then 39 in another. In Perry County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. A new water plan is also being planned for the city of Hazard, but that project has not been awarded yet. Two state senators filed a bill to address the ongoing bus driver shortages. State Senators David Yates and Robin Webb filed Senate Bill 92 yesterday. The bill aims to tackle student transportation challenges statewide by, by allowing the use of non-school bus vehicles for flexible student transportation. They say the bill is designed to enhance efficiency, save districts money, improve student safety, and minimize the time students spend on buses each day. We have a sh huge shortage of CDL drivers. Uh, we do not have, that's, we're losing bus drivers, even those that have CDL, we're losing them to other, whether it's trucking companies and other things. Um, and so they're saying by giving us another tool where we can transport kids without the CDL qualification, um, we'll make things faster, more efficient and safer. The Kentucky Department of Education will still require safety training. It's a project 50 years in the making, and yesterday, Governor Bashir gave an update on the expansion of the Mountain Parkway. He hopes to complete it before his second term as governor ends. Right now, crews from Wolf to McGoffin counties are working to expand the two lanes of the parkway to four. Governor Bashir says this is an exciting time for people in that area.
Right now, 100% of this project is either completed, under construction, or under contract, the first time we've ever been able to say that about the four laning of the Mountain Parkway. Governor Bashir says Bizak Construction and Eastern Kentucky Com Company will finish the four lane project, and that is important to the people of Eastern Kentucky and the Commonwealth. A petition to name Paintsville Late State Park after country music legend Loretta Lynn now has around 26,000 signatures. WEKU reports State Senator Robin Webb, who is a distant cousin of the legendary country music singer, continues her efforts to build public support. Lynn grew up in Butcher Holler, which is about 15 miles from the park. The region is also home to many other country music artists like Tyler Childers and Chris Stapleton. And Webb thinks the area should take advantage of that. When we return, the Grammys is getting a rare performance from one of the 60s most famous folk artists. You know, I always love checking out the web cameras no matter the time of the day. Looks good here at WYMT. Take note of the temp expressed by concerns about maybe some black ice issues this morning. Yeah, check out this view from UVA Wise. We'll explain your first alert seven day forecast coming up right after.